So maybe you have come across this one. Apple, IBM, Google don't care anymore if the student went to college or not. Because what they care, because they are profit oriented, they just want to make money. They care just, uh, the companies just want to know you can create more value than you take out in salary. That's all they want to know. So how do we go about um, meeting this demand or this expectation? Uh, this in accounting, big four, those uh, big company, um, they also look beyond academics now. They don't only go for CGPA 4.0 and so on because they know the CGPA doesn't say everything about the competency of the student. So question is, would digital credentialing disrupt traditional credentialing system that we know and that we have been doing for a long time? So we are looking at now a badge in the form of digital badge. Digital badge credential represent future of learning. Can open badges create a bridge from colleges to careers? If you remember my slide earlier, how do we create a bridge between formal education environment and non-formal informal uh, education environment? So, shall we maybe look at uh, how we can reimagine credential? This is a report, the latest report from uh, Horizon Report. But I just want to take one from this report. One of the future trend is on modularized and disaggregated degrees. I will explain more later on what does it mean by disaggregated degrees. But rest assured, this is the key. This is the key where we can do a lot of things in the future. Dalam context micro-credential. Because we're looking at now alternative credentialing. We want to move away, we want to provide new path, new opportunities. It's not only we can give a formal qualification in, form, in the form of degree after four years, but we can do, we can give other form of credential other than a degree. And this come, this come under the big umbrella of digital credentialing. This is one document, comprehensive document, uh, published by UNESCO. Uh, MQA working on this micro-credential guideline. And we have launched the first part of this guideline in March this year. This one is for the professional uh, development program. Okay? But the, uh, the other one is for the academic program. How we can have micro-credential program for academic program which should be ready by end of the year. Okay, moving forward. Um, the, the main driving force why we are moving towards this digital credential, micro-credential and so on is because of the technology, the digital disruption. Uh, we are living in a world of hyper-connected. Everyone has, is having a smartphone. <laughs> it can be a powerful tool that we can use for education, right? 5G is coming, everyone is connected. 5G is coming even faster, we can access everything faster. We can get education in a more affordable way. The device itself, uh, that's why everyone has a smartphone because it's very affordable and, and yet very powerful mobile device. How do we take advantage of this? Okay. So we need to ask this question in the world of digital nowadays, how do we recognize and value the way people learn in the digital world? Again, I mentioned about our, what we are doing is in the formal education, just in case curriculum. This is basically what we call learn to earn. So we spend four years to learn, get a degree, go out, work, get a salary and earn, basically. But we want to reverse this. We want to tap the market where people work, Earn, but at the same time they want to learn and finally they want to get a formal qualification okay so this is where you know um, the way the way people learn now in the digital world is what we call learning on demand which means that when you need it you can get it just in time just enough and very personalized just for me okay 
So the new credentialing system is emerging as self-directed learning continues to expand. The reason why uh, we need to have a new form of credential, the new form to recognize learning, to recognize competency, because people now learn more and more people learn on their own. Because they have this, okay? An exabyte of information that can they can tap from the internet. You can learn just about everything nowadays, right? You can have your a professor sitting next to you, and you can learn, you know, uh, anything. You can you can repeat again, you can revise again, again and again. So self-directed learning. People now have total control of what they want to learn, when they want to learn, how they want to learn. Total control. And therefore, we need to find new ways. Macam tadi I kata, if you watch a three minutes video, I get one skill. How do I get a recognition? How, how do I get some form of a recognition for my competency for that particular skill that I have uh, acquired? So we are now moving from so-called time-based education, which is like, uh, like what we are doing now, four years. Four years is four years, no compromise, so it's time-based. But we want to move towards competency-based education. It means that, okay, this is the module, or this is the course. Usually it will take 14 weeks, but if you are good enough, if you are smart enough, you can take four weeks, or even four hours. <laughs> as long as you take this exam, you pass. And that's evidence of competency. You have shown that, you have demonstrated that you are, you know, uh, you can do this, you can do that, and, and so on. The, the learning outcome, the course learning outcome. That's competency-based education.